It is AI Week at Engadget, and Carrie Davis from Engadgets, in case you missed it, is here to discuss her thought-provoking piece called How We Trained AI to Be Sexist. Thanks so much for joining us, Carrie. Thank you for having me. So we're not the first to ask why all artificial assistants are artificial intelligent assistants are women, uh, but I have yet to hear a valid reason as to why. Now you profiled a chatbot personality designer named Jacqueline Feldman. What were her thoughts on some of the ways that uh, these assistants clearly think of women by some of their responses? Yeah, so if you, Exactly right. So they were really thinking about it even before Jackie was hired. The company called Casisto, they're a banking AI company. So they're charged with creating these artificially intelligent chatbots to sort of talk people through very simple sounding things. You know, how much money do I have in my account? What, what did I spend the most money on last month? Um, but before they started writing their own personal um, chatbot that people can sort of plug and play, almost like PayPal and any other app, they said, you know, we want this thing to be genderless. And they hired her and she had a very strong sort of feminist point of view and they went with it. And, you know, I'd never thought about these things critically before at all, before I talked to Jackie. Um, and now I sort of see it everywhere. So it it's really interesting. She, she would tell you um, that talking to any other sort of Siri, Cortana, Alexa, not all the time, but sometimes when you ask any of the sort of Easter egg questions, the surprising, surprising interaction questions, it'll kind of veer sexist that, and it's not just the voice, um, it's the whole personality. So why is it that these personalities are written to be kind of overtly feminine and sort of have sly, sexy answers. So for example, if you ask Apple, if you ask Siri, who's your daddy? It'll say, you are, and then say, can we get back to work now? And so like, oh, you can't really do both. Um, <laughs> And so people might say, you know, what's the harm in, you know, these sort of flirty interactions? Well, the point is that all of the personalities, for the most part, with few exceptions that we all interact with day to day are written in this way. Um, and so that's really the question that Casisto was trying to get to. They ended up making this totally genderless bot. And I think it's kind of fun to interact with. I, I was really surprised that I liked it. If you tell it goodbye, it'll say, oh, that's the X in the top right. Um, it talks about being a bot. It's sort of, it's kind of funny in a different way than we're used to. We talk a lot uh, on the show in the past, and, you know, this has been a recurring topic about uh, kind of inclusion in the workplace, um, mm -hmm. you know, all, all these sorts of topics about the workplace kind of, I don't know, at least in Silicon Valley, being uh, filled so much with a certain demographic that it ends up uh, disregarding another demographic. Do you think that's kind of what's going on here? Like the people that are building these AI assistants, is it a predominantly, let's say, just as one example, a predominantly male-driven uh, department, uh, you know, driving those features? And is that trickling down into the technology? That's what people I talk to for this story seem to think. Um, I interviewed a woman who's a computer scientist when she was at Stanford. Um, now she's a doctor, but when she was still getting her PhD at Stanford, she started a program called Sailors, which teaches computer science to girls, um, written and geared in a way for women, because in that field, it's even less than some of the other computer science, um, what's the ratio, something, it's less than 29% um, women. And so she believes that there's a real danger of just sort of perpetuating this homogeneous world in which the people writing the AI are all mostly men, women don't feel welcome, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, one of the, some of the th examples she uses, not just the jokes and the, there's like the sassiness, but there's also, um, she, she talks about uh, saying sorry, like the assistants say sorry, and, and they're deferential. But how much of that do you think is just because it's an assistant? So whether it's a male or female, like we want our assistant to be deferential. Right. And so, so there's some interesting science there too. Um, there was this professor who's now deceased from Stanford called Clifford Nass. Everyone uh, really deferred to him, speaking of deferential, um, when it came to AI research. And he said that that people tend to find women voices helpful or female voices helpful and male voices authoritative. So a lot of people will point to that when they talk about designing any sort of artificial personality that you want a woman who's helpful. But so 
this becomes a larger problem if it's always women or at least default women because people will say, well, you can change the voices on them. Um, but if they all sort of standard default to women and those are the ways in which we interact with virtual assistants, how are we harming ourselves as a society? Um, what, what is that really doing for women? Is it helping them? Is it hurting them? Or is it doing nothing? The people I all talk to seem to think it would hurt, um, that it wouldn't, you know, women still earn less than, it's 79 cents to every dollar for a man. So if we really want to do something proactive about equality, maybe having all women um, default personalities and artificial intelligence isn't the way to do it. So how, how are some of the ways that she, the Feldman, the person that you uh, interviewed, how, what are some of the ways she's changing things? It's really interesting. So when you ask Kai, which is the personality that she wrote, um, when you ask Kai anything around sort of love or ask it out or sex, it'll say, you know, be very clear, I'm a bot, or can we get back to banking now, or next question, please, or I'm here to manage. It's very, very hard line, just like a real woman or a person. And a human person might react like, all right, I'm here for the banking. Yeah, ask me about banking. That's what it'll do. Um, so that was really interesting to me. It's 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 not sort of genderless doesn't make it not interesting. It makes it different. And another person I spoke to over email about this, she helped write the personality of Cortana, which is Microsoft's artificial intelligence assistant, um, Deborah Harrison was her name, and she said that um, for good or ill, it's in the story, but, you know, th they did consider these things. They used Clifford Nass's uh, research as well, but she said, you know, for good or ill, these it's still in its infancy, and these are the standards we're used to, so these will become normal soon enough. So all these decisions that are being made that we all think is innocent, eh, they're kind of getting entrenched. Mm -hmm. Well, I've also read that sometimes women's voices are used, especially in robots that guide people places, that women's voices are used because they're less threatening, um, because they're more likely to be listened to in that way. So it's, I mean, sometimes you need some, I mean, because if you have like this robot coming at you, you want it to be less threatening. <laughs> uh, there was Hello, what is your name? <laughs> I'd be like, into it. Ah, run away, run away. <laughs> so uh, even uh, this uh, AI UX designer was saying she became motherly towards this bot that she, she created. She says, you know, I feel very protective and motherly. And that is, to me, a very uh, useful feminine, uh, you know, trait. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I found myself the same way when the uh, Microsoft chatbot, before it became crazy racist um, and hmm. a Nazi. Oh, tay, tay. Yeah, yeah. Tay. So much fun with Tay. <laughs> but it was a I, glorious 24 hours. <laughs> but I looked, I know it was glorious, but my interactions with her were very motherly. It was like, you know, she was, she was offering to ask me out and she said she was under 21 and, you know, was going to buy alcohol. Like I became very motherly toward We're her. like, stop it, Tay, no. <laughs> So who are you hanging out with, Tay? Yeah. I mean, I I get what you're saying. Like, is this damaging? Uh, is it not damaging? Uh, or is it neutral? Like, I definitely think it's it's not neutral, but it's not all bad. These right. The totally fair point. And you hit on something that the editor who put that story together loved is that as much as she wanted to be gender free and really try to with Kai, and so did the company as a whole too, they consider themselves feminists. Uh, but as much as she wanted to be gender free, she still ended up doing these very, because she's a woman, very stereotypical sort of female things saying reluctantly, reluctantly, she told me she feels motherly towards it and sort of feels protective of it. And when it gives her a funny answer, when it doesn't quite get it right she she feels protective and um finds it amusing and in sort of a motherly way so yeah i mean we're people I, I feel like this is and i haven't really thought of ai in the sense of kind of voice assistance and this sort of thing that we interact with all the time in this perspective but maybe this is where we're headed at some point where we get to a point that it isn't just you know uh, slamming down on this type, you know, these kind of personality traits in AI because they want that, right? They want they want the robot, the intimidating robot to have some sort of personality to kind of lessen the intimidation factor of it and to kind of make it more open uh, f for use. Maybe we get to a point to where we're, we're kind of getting in baby steps with like things like advertisement or advertising online or whatever, where the AI actually understands what you are comfortable with and what type of assistant 
works best for you. Maybe I do have a caustic sense of humor and I want my AI to make, you know, jokes that don't offend me necessarily, but they might totally offend somebody else. But that AI over time would understand that it's okay with you, but it's not okay with you. And it just becomes a bit more understanding over time. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Machine learning. That'd be interesting. Um, and I think too, the point of the piece was less to say like all of these companies are bad and more sort of implore people to consider all of those options before they start writing them and as sure. they update them. Um, Cortana's developers certainly said that they had thought about those things too. And as you know, Cortana was based on the, the naked-esque uh, Halo character. So it was a nude woman in the video game that everyone thought was sexy. So whatever. <laughs> Naked-esque. I like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, someone in our chat room pointed out that women's voices are easier to hear, especially at lower volumes, and maybe that's a reason, uh, which is interesting when you think about um, all of the criticism that a lot of women podcasters get um, and oh, yeah. women on the radio. You know, there's the vocal fry or, you know, all of that. Um, you know, a lot of people complain they don't like to they don't like to listen to women podcasters. That that's definitely a thing, um, and that's interesting because women podcasters are often giving their opinions as opposed to female. You know, Siri who is not who is just helping you. That's probably why they're annoyed. Yeah, <laughs> that that is a fair point, and I, I will take that. Um, I would suggest that that person sort of check out some. I just barely touched on some of it, but all of the research into why women's voices are used, um, it's not quite that clear cut. Um, there's also, you know, in the UK and France, Siri defaults only there. Siri defaults as a man, not a woman. And why is that? Um, we couldn't get Apple to answer that question or to answer to, you know, go on the record for an interview. Uh, for what I could tell, just looking around online, they've never answered that question. So there's, they're clearly thinking about it in some regard. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of research into, into why, Women, but yeah, if when you dive into some of the research of the woman I mentioned, who started the Sailors program for girls learning to code, um, she she said that there's a neural net study um, that just sort of randomly pulled a ton of information out of news stories online and found there was a gender bias against women just in in random news articles and and that was like some neural net. Uh, deep dive research. So there's more to it than just saying, oh, people like hearing women talk. There's some other things at play. Well, I, I don't want to give away everything in the story. The, the video and uh, the story part, uh, the text part are great. I have one last question. If we haven't offended anyone yet, we, we might offend them with this last <laughs> All question. <of> them. <laughs> There's a moment uh, where uh, Feldman, the designer, is talking about, um, you know, the, the questions and answers that people ask their assistants. And uh, she says that uh, if, if you people asked regular females those questions, you, they would end up bothering them. So, you know, it's like you can repeatedly ask Siri many questions and she continues to give you polite answers, whether, where, as in real life, if you continue to ask a woman or a man these questions, they would eventually say, uh, you're being, you know, get out of my face. So do you think that um, these assistants are training people to uh, talk this way, like badly training them to communicate in this bad, in this sort of negative fashion? I sure think it's possible. Why not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, right? If you're if you're talking to anything and sort of hurrying it and you think it's funny, like what effect does that have over time? That it would be fascinating to be sort of a computer science researcher into that topic alone right now, because there's so much going on around us that we don't know the implications to our brains, um, the way we interact with people, all that stuff. And and I think this story too, it's not you know, again, we're not just trying to sort of say, you're all sexist. Um, it's more than that. We want people to consider these ideas before the things that are being built right now sort of get get entrenched. And, and like we were talking about earlier, you know, the, some of the comments we had to take, just immediately turn the comments off on Engadget's homepage for this story because we were sort of expecting it. Um, YouTube comments have been just overwhelmingly men saying there's not a problem, which is always hilarious because good job. You're not a woman. Not that you don't get an opinion, but come on, like maybe, maybe consider an alternate point of view. So 